Hi everybody, um, my name is Moira Ramsey. I live in the barony of Stromgard in the Rivers region of Ontier. And I'm here to present my video of spinning on my Saxony style spinning wheel. So this is a Saxony style or a Sleeping Beauty wheel. And it, this particular wheel is a Shaq to Reeves 30 inch diameter. So this is 30 inches and it works as a spinning wheel that you generally would work with. So I am currently working on some fine thread. I am so, I'm spinning up for a friend of mine for a weaving project and this is what I am working up on my bobbin. So what I'm going to do here is set it up so that my tension moves more slowly. This allows me more time to draft and work on the bobbin. I'm working on um, this silk single. The fiber I'm using is Tassa silk. So the silk is a wild um, harvested silk. Uh, there are two versions. There's cultivated silk and tessa silk. Tessa silk tends to be a have a rich creamy color to it and it's a little bit toothier or grippier. Um, cultivated silk is incredibly smooth and incredibly white. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do some spinning so you can see how quickly things move. That clicking you hear is the knot on my drive band. And I am taking my tuss of silk. I'm gonna work on a join. So I come in at a 90 degree angle. And I just let it latch on. And what I'm doing is I'm spinning in a worsted manner. So with my, with my left hand, I'm not allowing the spin to go travel up into my fiber and I am creating what's referred to as a drafting zone. So I'm creating a triangle here to allow the fiber to work. And I'm letting very little fiber into the spin while I do this so that I am spinning as finely as possible. The goal being this is part one or phase one of a spinning project a friend of mine is working on and I'm doing the spinning of a fine silk thread and I am spinning what is referred to as a single. So it's one strand, one continuous strand of this silk. And I am trying to spin very, very fine and very consistent, which takes practice. I have been spinning for over a decade and I am a naturally fine spinner and I'm a natural worsted spinner. Uh, woolen, I can do it. It's not something I'm comfortable with. It takes actually takes a great deal of work for me to be comfortable. But you can see that it twists into, so my forward hand is the brake, and I am just using very, very light pressure between my, my fingers and my thumb to spin. Let me get that back on the track there. And create a nice, fine thread. And my right hand or my 
back hand is my drafting zone, creating the triangle, and I'm simply separating out the fibers as I work. I'm going to change bobbins because it's not picking up. Not change bobbins, but change hooks now. So, just creating a new zone. Adjust my tension a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. And that's where you can see me where I broke it. And that happens all the time. What I'm doing here is I'm pulling the thread through the orifice with my orifice hook. And I'm going to thank my husband for not smirking. He doesn't like the word orifice. So I've pulled it through and I'm going to just pick it up for you to see what I'm doing with it. So again, the goal here is a nice super fine thread that my friend can now use on her project, on her weaving project. I believe it's for tablet weaving. I am not 100% certain. Uh, if I were doing this in the period that she does her weaving, I should be using a, a spindle. Um, when spinning wheels did not exist in the time frame that my friend studies her weaving, which is uh, Norse. It is pre-1066, I believe. And um, Western Europe did, simply didn't have spinning wheels in that age. It was all the spinning was still being done with a spindle. But this is my... Actually, a really nice drafting zone. So this is my spinning. And I hope you've enjoyed this tiny, tiny look into my creative life. Thank you for watching. Thank you, baby.